Over the past 20 years, the ideas and methods of computational logic have acquired a firm footing in many branches of computing. In the fields of programming and software, the new, declarative approach of logic programming has proved highly versatile and been successfully applied across many branches of industry, commerce and science. Here at the annual Practical Applications of Prolog conference, researchers, developers and users of logic programming gather to discuss the latest and best industrial applications of this key computing technology. We asked leaders in the field to explain why they use logic programming and what are the main benefits one can expect. Uh, Boeing has gone through a number of transitions and Boeing Electronics, for instance, is, is uh, now uh, a part of the aerospace company that's been absorbed. But I'm in, uh, and, or at least have been up until just a few months ago, uh, was it in Boeing Computer Services and supporting Boeing Commercial Airplane Company. And so in the commercial airplane side of it, uh, mostly the kinds of things you end up supporting are manufacturing systems or business systems. And uh, specifically the kinds of stuff we've been doing lately, it's been moving from expert systems to data management type applications of Prolog and in uh, bringing various older systems together into uh, semantically integrated data sources and doing decision support as part of that. I'm part of the uh, software development division within IBM. There are several laboratories around the world and in, there's one located in Böbling in Germany. In particular, I'm working for a deep division or a closer to smaller division that uh, is doing software development for various aspects of about uh, public domain uh, software market. That means we have customers like uh, uh, city authorities, country authorities, or occasions like that. Yeah. So I'm the managing director of Prologia, and Prologia is a company who has two main aims. First, it is to develop some. Uh, constraint logic programming languages and uh, prolog languages and um, gen generator for uh, expert system so a tool for AI artificial intelligence and the second aim is to uh, develop some applications with these tools and applications in the field uh, like uh, scheduling, uh, banking, optimization and different, uh, different kind of applications. In Europe, much of the research and development carried out in the field of logic programming is coordinated by the Network of Excellence in Computational Logic, CompuLogNet, which links over a hundred leading research centers, universities and companies. Funded within the European Community's Esprit program, CompuLogNet is managed and coordinated here at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, the DFKI, located in Germany's Saarland region. Professor Gert Schmolke is one of the center's leading scientists. Uh, the main project I'm heading is Hydra, that's a national project on concurrent constraint programming, and it collaborates closely with the Esprit project Acclaim, in which we are a partner. Uh, in both projects, we are developing a higher order concurrent constraint language called OS, which Provides it's, it's supposed to provide at the same time for multi-agent programming and for problem solving in the style of logic programming. The basic use that my smaller department makes use of uh, logic programming is in an expert system for environment assessment, but also within this labor laboratory where I'm working in, there are prolog applications for machine translation and thesaurus management and uh, simulation of workflow management systems. Integration of legacy systems has been our main focus and we're in a group that's called data management infrastructure and that uh, has been developing tools primarily for being able to integrate sources of data which uh, you know, the, the systems themselves are in some cases things that we don't want to throw away. We want to preserve those systems because it's expensive to to throw them away and, and just to replace them with newer systems. But we want to be able to do decision support activities that require getting data from several sources, several legacy systems. And in some cases you bring that data together into a warehouse 
and then you use tools to, uh, to get the data there to integrate it, or tools after the fact that you've gotten it together to abstract the data up into higher levels of information. And that has been a, a rather key use of Prolog, is to how to build those abstractions in a maintainable way uh, once you've gotten them into an integrated source. It is so that in the last five or ten years, um, a lot of environmental laws have been set up in order to assure the quality of the environment. And uh, this has led to a situation where on the one hand side you have legal regulations uh, that need to be respected or you have ecological research where certain recommendations are stated and investigated. And all this knowledge is compiled or within an expert system and that is written in Prolog and executes itself in Prolog. So. I'd characterize most of my Prolog applications uh, as being abstractions above the level of just implementing a program to do a particular task. Usually there's a, there's a, a, a new language or a new way of thinking about a problem that's much more direct and that the Prolog uh, program is a way of getting at the fundamental core of the problem and not spending lots and lots of time programming at the lower levels. And as a result, some of the things I've done is like um, build a new interpreter for a language that understands about different hardware description languages for in the electronic CAD area. So um, I have this prologue module that reads pro descriptions of hardware description languages and then uh, is able to translate between them based on this high level description of the languages. So again, it, was, it, was, it became very powerful when I thought of Prolog as being sort of the language's language and built a, another level of, of code which talked about language structure as being the data that it, that it was manipulating. The basic use of Prolog is in, in semantically integrating the data from various sources. You don't necessarily want to change the way the data is structured from, the, from each system. You may want to preserve the structure of that data just to make it easy to keep things updated. And then use Prolog to integrate the data from the various sources and, and to create these information abstractions that are essential to being able to do decision support. Now the other, <clears throat> the other thing uh, that's important about the use of Prolog in this project is that we've implemented a query language that goes beyond relational uh, query language or SQL, uh, structured query language. And so we've implemented this logic uh, query language which is very similar to Prolog itself. And therefore, uh, because of using Prolog, we were able to, to create uh, an easier language to use to query about these information objects. So it's kind of a combination of, of object technology, logic, and the idea of having uh, uh, procedures or functions that could be all brought together and queried about at the same time. So if you can query about a data object using a function and using some uh, logical abstractions all in the same uh, uh, box, so to speak. Well, I think the, the most important use of logic programming is uh, the fact that uh, for the inferencing or for the computation of the assessments, we have a full-blown inference engine and when using a logic programming language you get the inference engine for free instead of uh, writing it for your specific purposes by hand well given the kind of queries you want to answer. That was the situation in the project in the first phase where we had a, an implementation of the inference engine in Lisp but it's just only for a very small amount of queries that can be processed and Prolog gives you the power to process any kind of query. Imagine that you have a company that produces glass planes. So here are a number of orders for glass pieces. This is a glass plane produced and the idea is to have as many orders in one glass plane as possible. Of course you must be able to cut the plane in straight lanes. So it's a typical constraint problem, it's a cutting stock problem. And if I say solve here, uh, the constraint solver starts. It's a fairly hard problem. Here you can see the solution. So we have the orders on the glass plane. And you see we can have a, uh, a straight cut here. And then you, we can continue with straight cutting, which is important in this glass cutting problem. This is a lift simulation. We have a random generator 
generating lift requests, so you can see them moving up and down, and then by hand I can also put in requests, like I want to have a lift in the seventh floor, and then I can say go down to the first floor, so it will go down to the first floor, I can get another one in the eighth floor, and say okay, go down to the first floor. This is a very short uh, OS program, it's about six pages. Well, I think um, the basic economic benefit will be that you can run projects with a small amount of people. So that is the economic ben benefit I think that we can see at the moment, which would not be possible if you use uh, more conventional languages. Well, one of the things about Prolog that we found to be true is, is there's been this claim that you can write uh, fewer lines of Prolog than a conventional language like C or, or ADA or, or something, and, uh, or COBOL, uh, which is probably used most commonly at Boeing. And I think that that gives you the benefit of lower maintenance. Now, what we have done in the integration or in the semantic integration is uh, <clears throat> the work that we've done is we've found that, that we can very quickly uh, write what the integration rules are between various sources and uh, maintain that in Prolog quite easily. So we've, we've at least convinced ourselves that this has been a good implementation direction. In some cases, um, the programs I've written have been re-implementations of existing programs written in uh, other programs, most notably the most popular programming language C. And there, the real reason for writing the program in Prolog is because it's uh, 10 to 20 times less code. And uh, really, reading the program looks like a, a process of reading a description of what the problem was. So one of my motivations for, ri for writing in Prolog is to take what is a quarter of a million lines of code in one case um, and, and rewriting it as 10,000 lines of, of a very high level of Prolog code that is readable and looks more like a description of, of the problem that you're, you're trying to solve. And that's, that's, I'd say, one of the primary uses of Prolog, simply to get the amount of code manageable and, and at a very high level of description. And the other use, as I said, the uh, meta interpreter that, that, that dealt with language descriptions is something which would be fundamentally much, much more difficult in a traditional programming language. It would, it would involve um, you know, orders of magnitude more code and more, more uh, trouble to produce. So in that situation, there's a, there's a problem that I, I basically would not have um, attempted to attack in, in another programming language, in a lower level programming language. Um, many developers like the flexibility of the language and uh, you can notice that uh, we gain a lot of time with the maintenance and we can decrease a lot the maintenance cost and um, it's a very good tool for pro prototyping and uh, if it allows a very good return on investment. So it's a very, a very good tool that is appreciated by the developers for the flexibility, the, um, the easiness to, to develop and the, the time that you spare for development. CompuLogNet is a major contributor to the annual practical application of Prolog conference, as well as to many other international events taking place in the field of logic and computation. The network also organizes its own special scientific workshops and industrial seminars and assists in the training of young researchers on a European-wide basis. In addition, CompuLogNet operates a full range of information and communication services helping scientists and industry to work together on the challenging issues in information technology. To receive more information about the European network and about the many benefits of computational logic, you can contact CompuLogNet in any of the following ways.